Ocean's eight, more like estrogen's eight, am I right? <laughs> too far? It was too far. Hello everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker here with you. Today we'll be talking about Ocean's 8, but first let's start with the drink. And the drink I'm gonna do today is the Classic Dry Martini. Uh, and the Classic Dry Martini is really easy. It is three parts gin, half part dry vermouth, and two dashes of orange bitters. Put into a shaker with ice, shake and well, and uh, pour, pour it into a, a martini glass, of course. Uh, so uh, let's make this drink and talk about Ocean's 8. Ocean's 8 is directed and written by Gary Ross and star Sandra Bullock and a whole slew of amazing actresses there to back her up. I mean, there's just so many, tons, more than you can count. They, okay, there's eight of them. I mean, it's, there's eight. There, it, it's right there in the title. Uh, there's eight. And so what is Ocean's 8 about? Ocean's 8 just like the previous movies that have come before, even the Sinatra 1960s uh, movie is about a group of, that's right, a group of uh, individuals that have a particular skill set to come together to perform some kind of heist. Uh, and in this instance, these fine ladies come together to uh, steal some jewels from the Met Gala. One, two. And then the uh, amazing, uh, you know, action ensues. Let's shake this up and try this classy. And so classy, I'm using one of these things. Here's to Ocean's 8 and the Dry Martini. Cheers, everybody. Okay, so Ocean's 8 is, uh, I have to say, a, a direct sequel off of the Clooney Pitt uh, set of Ocean's movies. And we're following this time Debbie Ocean, played by Sandra Bullock, who's the sister of Danny Ocean, uh, George Clooney's character. And uh, I, I think it's important to note that it is not a reboot. It is not a reimagining. It is a direct sequel. And I think this is very smart on the filmmakers to do this uh, because they, they don't just ignore what happened before or, or the movies that have come before that people have come to love and really enjoy. Uh, they, they, they take those movies, they, they, they have homages, sometimes direct and some very fun homages to these movies, and, um, and then build on the stuff that the, these other uh, three Oceans movies did before it, uh, which is very smart. They don't just, you know, take the idea and then create this whole new universe and just ignore and throw away what's happened in the past like some other movies have done. Ghostbusters. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Now what this movie does really right is it, it amasses this incredible caliber, caliber of female actresses to play these you know, quirky, interesting roles. From Sandra Bullock uh, to uh, the regalness of Kate Blanchett to the quirkiness of Helena Bonham Carter to the, the, the Sarah Paulson from the American Horror Story who can pretty much do anything. Uh, the, all these actors are so good. Mindy Kaling uh, and even Rihanna and Aquafina, who I thought were going to be a little annoying and strange, but they weren't. They were actually very good. Um, all all these actors that uh, come together, especially uh, Anne Hathaway, who seems to have had the most fun playing this kind of vapid starlet uh, in kind of this conceited way um, that is is going to be wearing the target of the uh, Ocean's Crew heist, which is a necklace from Cartier that is valued at over $150 million. I mean, seriously, the fact that all these women are so good is just shouldn't be a, a surprise to anybody. I mean, this, this, this set of actors is just incredible. 
So the mechanics and visualization of the heist are done pretty well, which is a good thing because it's the bulk of the movie. I mean, this film is uh, competently made and well put together, and there are some, rightfully so, some fun, unbelievably things that unbelievable things that happen in this movie, kind of like the original, or well, just like the original, mostly. And this is what brings me into a bit of the negatives here. Inevitably, there are going to be comparisons to the Pitt and Clooney uh, set of movies, set of Ocean's movies, especially Ocean's Eleven, which this thing really mirrors very heavily on. Um, and, uh, and as I mentioned before, these comparisons can be a plus side, but they can also be a negative. And what I mean by that is that this movie tries really hard, along with the kind of jarring music changes to the slickness or the attempted slickness at the at the aesthetic and the and the way the camera moves, um, uh, it, it, even to where they go into the to, to Cartier and they show the jewels in this kind of kaleidoscope type of look to it, and it just it just became. When I say they tried really hard, it became really noticeable as to how hard they were actually trying. And what they did was it it kind of made th their attempts at doing that desperate and sort of silly looking and really noticeable. Now, to add to this point, uh, the chemistry between Pitt and Clooney was was very noticeable. It's one of the things that I loved about uh, Ocean's Eleven and f further on in 12 and 13. Whether they are or not, Pitt and Clooney looked like that they were old friends that just enjoyed hanging out and have known each other for years. And that was part of the magic of that movie. Their, their chemistry was tangible. And, and that's one of the things I loved. It just felt like that you were just hanging out with these guys, these utterly, extraordinarily cool guys that uh that that just did that just had this kind of natural chemistry with each other that uh is attempted in this movie but they don't quite get there they don't quite get that mag magic and they get close these actresses are so good that they get they the the almost get there they 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 have some really good like uh, which seems like ad lib moments um but they just don't it, it doesn't have that slickness and cleverness and quirkiness of the original that um that they're trying to recreate here and that's one of the problems with this movie or the biggest problem in my opinion is that they don't ha they don't offer anything new it's pretty much just a rehash of Ocean's Eleven uh, except with women which is fine it's a great idea I, I love the idea but I just they they don't they don't offer anything new they don't try to do anything different um, and even even the way that they do the storytelling, they they try to they, they almost shoot themselves in the foot with trying to do too much. And even for an Ocean's movie, and I will totally concede that Ocean's Eleven has some impossible, you know, little little moments that you know if you think too hard about it, it all will unravel. But this one just tries to do too much, and they sort of start tripping over themselves, and some of the twists and turns just become unnecessary. Look, all in all, I had an an, an okay time with this. This movie's fine. Uh, I went to see this with a friend. We came out. We were like, that was that was fine but unfortunately ultimately forgettable and i think it's forgettable because they didn't take chances they didn't try to do something new with it um i didn't have a bad time watching it i had fun i laughed it was uh, a, a, an interesting idea but they just it's it, it's just it, it's just there it's just kind of oh that was fine um and it, it's they they just rehash the original and it's not quite as good as the original so if that's something you'd want to see these actresses are great they're worth watching they really are um, but other than the, other than that the, the the movie is just kind of there uh, so yeah all right well thank you so much everybody for joining me please like share subscribe down here in the bottom let me know in the comments what your favorite oceans movie is it's probably not the Sinatra one because that's pretty bad uh, so cheers everybody thank you so much for joining me have a drink on me. Thank you. Bye-bye.